to sing because I think I can sing. I just want to sing. <laughs> Once I wonder how to sing. Everybody, just playing with my new uh, toy here, and uh, my daughter has one of these, and it's a unicorn. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and uh, these things are uh, apparently very therapeutic. Have yeah. you? Do you have my, one of these? My girls do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm just trying to figure out if I like it or not. And all you do is just you just push these little things, and then you turn around, and then you just push them back. Um, you know, kind of like um, a hamster on a wheel here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a and, fidget tool. Uh, whatever. I guess I guess that's what it is. And uh, if you have anxiety or something like that, you can use one of these. But it is a unicorn. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Johnny, I had to fight Johnny for this, <laughs> yeah, so that's that okay. One. But anyway, <laughs> glad to see you guys here. This is our Thursday night live stream. Go ahead and smite thine like button. And if you do not smite the like button, then your transmission will go out in your car. And you will be cursed forever and have to suffer the dreadful. That's not true. That's Just heretical. It's in the Bible. I'm sorry. I've been studying faith healers all day, and I'm starting to act like one. Do it, or God will curse you. No, that's not That's not right. But anyway, smite thine like button. Go ahead, hit it. And I'm uh, glad to see all of you here tonight. Got a big night. And uh, please go ahead, if you will, share this video on your, you, you whatever, your, uh, what's the things all your out there? social platforms. Yeah, the social platforms, <laughs> Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Just go ahead and share it, retweet it, text it to everybody, sit down with a bowl of popcorn watching TV. Love to see you guys here tonight. Thank you very much. Got uh, Brother Johnny and Brother Levi over there. How you doing, Brother Johnny? Doing good. Good to be back. You uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> good. How you doing over there, Levi? 
Uh, it's really good to be back, brother. Yeah, okay. It's really good. good to be I'm back. glad that you're back and praise the Lord for you. And nice shirt you got there. Nice shirt you got, Doctrine Matters. Mm-hmm. And uh, praise the Lord. Hey, got a uh, uh, brother, brother Brandon Western is a friend of ours and he follows our channel, and, uh, follows our Facebook page, Missionary Spencer Smith. He sent me a picture of their little baby, Micah, who uh, just was born like not even two days ago. Wow. And, uh, uh, and right there, he's fresh out of the box is what he is, and uh, he's even got that new car smell to him. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, they uh, they gave him one of uh, the the, do- the Doctrine Matters dogs. Amen. So what a blessing. And he, he knows that Doctrine Matters, and he's not even been hatched for a week. So praise <laughs> the Lord for that, and uh, what a beautiful baby. Amen. Love it. Thank you very much for that, Brother Brandon, and uh, we're excited about that. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about false hope of faith healers, the false hope of faith healers. I think tonight we're going to go pretty deep into uh, some of the basically overview of the Bible. I want to show you a couple of things tonight that are very key for you to understand the entirety of the Word of God. We're going to try to help you with all that and uh, give you something to chew on. And uh, I'm going to show you a chart tonight from the about the Bible that will help you in your like a bird's eye view understanding of it. I, I think it's going to be a really good thing. So uh, go ahead and uh, just make plans to be with us for the next little while. We're going to talk about all this. But but Johnny, we got a contest tonight. We got a, yeah. like a thing we're doing. Um, we are going to do a giveaway, and everybody who donates tonight will be put into a drawing for a package. And the package is going to have a Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal. A, an unused one, really. And uh, and then a bag of Mingwa beef jerky. And then I'm going to put some bows in there from our friend Gertha down there in Haiti. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Haiti, in uh, Dominican Republic. And she's a Haitian lady down there, makes those. And we're going to uh, we're gonna give those away in our package tonight. And uh, so you get to be a part of that. We're going to give away nine packs just like that. So go ahead and make a donation in the live chat or in the PayPal link below. You can do either or. doesn't matter how much you give. You give a dollar, you might win the whole thing. It'd be good. So we're going to do that. And uh, so nine people will get a package just like that with three bows, a uh, three bows from Dominican Republic, mango beef jerky, and then a Doctrine Matters Bible study journal. And then we have one grand prize winner tonight. We're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna do a grand prize thing. And what we're gonna do is give away. All the things that we're going to do the the book and everything, right? The the mingo yes. and everything. Oh, yeah, all we're going to have all of that. Okay, you're going to have all of that. And in addition, one winner is going to get a special like mega package that involves um, this Doctrine Matters beanie hat. Uh, let's see here, right there. If I can show it on camera. Yeah, and you, you put that on on your head, of course. Still got the little plastic tags on it, and uh, the Doctrine Matters hat. And uh, that'll now be it's good. Been worn by Spencer, so it's, it's even more precious. Yeah, it's, it's, right? it has it has <laughs> never washed it again. It has a hair of <laughs> mine in it now. And uh, so you get one of these, and then you get. Uh, let's see here. Throw that to me. And then we have we had a hoodie uh, from Christmas that uh, we had, and it was a Spurgeon. You are all naughty hoodie, and this is actually a two XL, and uh, you get that. And then there's that big quote on the back. Of course, I won't unfold it just for whatever sake. And uh, so we're gonna give away the the hat the hoodie and then also a friend of ours sent us this bible right here we got a big old nice leather king james bible for everybody sorry for the evangelicals of that triggers but we give the king james bible (laughs) away out here and uh, this thing has got the tabs on it and it even i mean this is this is a nice bible y'all this is this is pretty good print and uh i mean got that nice new smell and the leather and everything on it so um this is a uh it's called a sword bible and i I, a sword study bible i'm not really familiar with these but uh these this is a really nice bible so has a sword on the front yeah it's a cool cool sword on the front so you can like stab satan with it you know (laughs) and uh, that's cool so we're going to uh we're going to give all that away tonight uh for one lucky winner is that lucky one providential providentially (laughs) favored providentially (laughs) favored winner winner <laughs> will get uh, this whole package so you'll get uh, the mingo beef jerky you'll get the, the doctor matters bible study journal you'll get the three bows you'll get the hat you'll get the bible 
this big nice bible and the hoodie and we'll just send that all to you for just as a thank you for watching and that'll be a great blessing so um we uh man this is this is gonna be a fun night so we're excited Let's about that so <laughs> go ahead and hit the like button and uh boy I, I, my hat my head was really warm there for a minute that was nice <laughs> and uh so give all this away you guys can really enjoy that and that'll be a great blessing so um let's see here it looks like people are uh yeah, people are go ahead and donate right now. So praise the Lord for that, guys. You can donate in the live chat or in the PayPal. There's a link in the description below. You can do either or. That will be fine. So uh, tonight I want to start off with a, with a, a verse in the book of Luke. And this is really interesting. So now here here's the deal. Um, after the Lord was crucified here, the, the disciples kind of had an identity crisis. They didn't even know what was going on. Uh, the, you know, the Lord told us that there'd be a kingdom and all this stuff like that. And, they had, and then all of a sudden he's crucified and he's gone. And it's like, oh, what do we do now? Okay. <laughs> so um, they had the problem that most of us have. They didn't understand their Bible. And, um, and Luke 24, verse 44 says this, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. So he's explaining that to them. He said, there's, a, there's some things coming forward that, uh, that I had to do to fulfill all of the law and prophet, uh, everything there, okay? And then verse number 45 says this, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Wow, that's a heavy verse, man. Then, he, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Tonight, I want that to be your prayer, that tonight you would, God would open up your understanding and that you might understand the scriptures. Verse 46 says this, Thus it was written, Thus behoove Christ to suffer and rise the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem, your witnesses of these things. And uh, so this is tonight what we want to try to do. I really fear that uh, churches today, especially even, I would even say preachers, no ministry. They know they know how to deal with people. Uh, they know how to. I mean, you know, they don't know how to run a church and organize a church and and do you know keep people busy and give people a cause to believe in. But do they really understand the scriptures? And uh, quite frankly, most of them don't understand the scriptures, but Johnny, because they don't even believe they have the scriptures in right. their in their in their language. Whatever. Um, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, but you can't understand the scriptures if you don't even believe that you have them which most people don't. They just don't say it that way. But I believe we have the Scriptures. I believe we have the Bible, especially in my language. I believe I have it. And uh, But the truth is you can have it and not understand it. And I believe that, that the Bible is not like an academic book. You can, you can be a godless heathen and go to MIT and understand some of the most advanced calculus and scientific physics and whatever like that. You can understand a lot of things without knowing God. But if you open up that book, the Bible, you have to have God open your understanding so that you can understand it. Because it's not just an academic book. It is a spiritual book that requires the author to read it with you. So uh, we're going to talk about that here tonight. Got, a, got 597, 596 watching, 284 thumbs up. That's not good enough, Brother Johnny. We need a lot more than that. And uh, we're going to need folks to go ahead and smite your like button and share this video. We want to try to get as many people watching tonight as we can. And I've got a great chart that I want to show you guys. You guys are really going to enjoy it. So go ahead and smite the like button, and that'll be good. So uh, when we come back from this break, we're going to talk about the false hope of faith healers, the false hope of faith healers. And I really want to emphasize this tonight because this is a big deal. So God bless you guys. We will be right back after this break. And uh, I need to try to find where that uh, little uh, little uh, commercial is that I was looking for. Anyway, we'll be right back. We'll see you guys in just a second. Well, hey guys, your friend Spencer here. We have had our website up for a couple months now, independentbaptist.church, and we've got reports from all over the country of people saying, you know, we got out of our bad church and we didn't even realize it, but there was a really solid Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church just right down the road from our house. We had no idea. And this website has been a tool that God has allowed to be used uh, for His glory, getting people into a better place. 
and uh, we want to encourage you to go revisit this website. We've done several new additions and updates to it, and it is a really good looking website. And we are constantly updating the database in this website. We have churches that we're adding and all kinds of things like that. And so we thank God for the opportunity to help you in this matter. Independentbaptist.church is your website for finding a good local Bible believing, Bible preaching church in your neighborhood. So go visit independentbaptist.church now, and God bless you as you search for a good new church. All right, guys, don't forget about our contest. We're going to give away nine packages tonight, and nine people are going to win this wonderful package right here, Mingua Beef Jerky, Dr. Matters Bible Study Journal, three bows from the Dominican Republic, and then one lucky winner will get uh, one providentially favored winner, rather. <laughs> i got to get my pagan talk out of my lingo, <laughs> uh, lingo while I still can. Y'all pray for me on that, that God will sanctify me so that I can be effective in that area of my life. Um, one providentially favored person will be receiving a nice new Bible right here. It's a pretty nice little thing. It's in the whatever. It's a pretty good deal. I do think so myself. So um, we're going to talk about the false hope of faith healers. Now today we talked about Benny Johnson, and I felt like it was such a heavy subject, such a big subject. Actually, I actually took the video and made it to where it wasn't public anymore because I really want to talk about this tonight and try to do it justice, okay? Because the video goes, uh, the idea of what is wrong with Bethel Church goes far deeper than just a Instagram post, Facebook post, and just the fact that there's a woman with cancer. It's 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 really a lot bigger deal than that. Um, there are heavy, heavy implications at this, uh, and I want to try to explain this to you the best that I possibly can, and asking God to give everyone understanding of the Scriptures. 2 Timothy 2.15 is where I want to start. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. And notice this right here. It says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the word study... I'm going to show you right here. The word study shows up in the New Testament twice. It says study to be quiet and do your own business. Okay, that's a good thing to study. But then it says study to show thyself approved unto God. And there's several other times, actually, the, the only time really, uh, there's three times in the, in the Bible that the word study appears. And the only time in the Bible that the Bible tells you to study the Bible, it tells you how to study the Bible. And the way you study the Bible is by dividing the Bible. God is a divider, not a uniter. God is a divider. Satan is a uniter. Okay, I want to make sure everybody gets that. God is a divider. Satan is a uniter. And he tells you to study the Bible by rightly dividing the word of truth. Division is how God works. Now, here is Bethel Church's, uh, their Instagram page. This is 782,000 followers, just a few more than me. And uh, so, uh, matter of fact, while we're here, I want to go ahead and just try to plug uh, my profile. If you guys are on Instagram, uh, go ahead and follow me on there. I'm Spencer Smith 312 You can find us there. We've got a lot of funny stuff. I post a lot of stuff on there that I cannot post on YouTube because just a little bit different rules and that kind of stuff there, so we post all that. But uh, Benny Johnson is the wife of Bill Johnson. She has been his wife for a very long time, and uh, she has cancer. I think she's a stage four cancer right now, very serious, uh, very, I mean, she's she can't breathe, all kinds of stuff like that. Here's what they post. Many of you already know Benny Johnson has been on a health journey overcoming cancer. We've been praying consistently, and she's experienced a measure of breakthrough. Now, you have to understand, Bethel Church are, are, are not just a bunch of people who put out music. They put out a ton of music. They're one of the most popular music groups in all the world, really, as far as Christian music. Uh, but these people are wild charismatics. They are absolutely just out there with their health and wealth, prosperity, and word of faith doctrine. These people are, I, I put them in the category of modernist. I think they're false teachers. They're dangerous. So when they say breakthrough, they're speaking about health. They're not speaking about anything spiritual. They're speaking about a physical healing of this woman. And then it says here, uh, now we feel led by the Lord to invite you and the uh, local and global church to join us in contending for her full physical healing. So you see, that's what they mean when they say this breakthrough. Uh, stand with us as we intentionally press in. And that, by the way, that's a charismatic term. Press in, just press in for victory for Benny. 
And uh, so they say all that. Now, whatever. Uh, I don't mind people praying for a woman to get cancer. If I get cancer someday, please pray for me. I mean, really, that there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an inherently natural thing. Uh, but what they're saying here is really wild. Uh, pray that be, Benny be able to sleep. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But here at the very bottom, this this right here at the bottom is what concerns me. Pray that her DNA aligns with God's order and that every cancer cell would be eradicated from her body. Uh, that is blatant health and wealth stuff. Um, I, now there was a nurse that messaged me and says that, uh, uh, DNA d being, uh, the disorder in the DNA is what causes cancer. And I, I understand all that and I get it. Uh, basically what they're saying is that, uh, they're, they're praying that they believe when, when they, when a nurse says that, I understand what she's saying, but when they say this, they mean something different. And that's the trick with charismatics is that they say a lot of same things that you and I would say, but they mean something completely different. That's why they're so deceptive and, um, pray for strength, hedge of protection, raise the shield of faith that would extinguish all attacks from the enemy enemy and no weapon of the enemy would prosper against her or her family. Oh, this is a, this is a, just rich. Uh, pray for courage and grace for Bill, their children, and extended family. Pray into Benny's future. Pray into her future. Th that's, I don't even know what, that's bad. That's really, that's new age talks, what that is. Mm -hmm. Concerning the things that are on her heart to see and accomplish. So pray into the future. Just launch those prayers out into the, into the nether and let those prayers meet her in the, that's, that's, guys, that is really bad stuff. But why do, why do they believe that? They believe this stuff because they cannot rightly divide the word of truth. Now, here's what I want to do. And I want you guys to uh, possibly uh, screenshot this and uh, check all this out. And um, it says right here in, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to read my text message. People always text me right in the middle of all this stuff here. Um I want you to see this chart that I have. Go ahead and screenshot this. Take a picture of it on your phone or whatever you got to do. I think this is a useful tool that will help you understand the Bible, rightly dividing the word of truth. The New Testament church gets its doctrine from the Pauline epistles. And I want you to read right under that arrow. Almost all modern heresies result from those that try to apply promises and rules from other parts of the Bible and impose them upon the church. The golden rule of Bible interpretation is all the Bible is for you. But not all the Bible is to you. And I want to really emphasize that again. All the Bible is for you, but not all the Bible is to you. Now, when it comes to this charismatic stuff that's out there, what they are doing is, I mean, there literally are charismatic people out there who are walking around buildings seven times and blowing trumpets, claiming it for Jesus. Wow, <laughs> they're 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 doing this stuff, okay? Uh, you know, you see, what was the king's name that that dipped himself seven times in the river? Um, what was his name? Is that that wasn't Naaman? Naaman. It was Naaman. Naaman. He was, was, okay, he wasn't a king, but he was a part of the military. I was ninety five percent sure it was Naaman, <laughs> but that five percent kept me back. Um, they, they literally, I, I have seen pictures on the internet of these charismatic groups going out to some local creek and dipping seven times in the river, <laughs> claiming God's healing as God gave to Naaman, because some prophet like a modern-day Elijah told them that was God's will. I have seen people doing this stuff, okay? Why are they doing that? They're doing that because they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. That's right. Now, here's what I want you to get. Now, this my, when I'm pointing to Paul's letters, I'm talking about Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. I am saying that the New Testament church gets its doctrine and its polity and its practices from that specific block right there. <clears throat> and this does not this is I'm this is called divisional view of the Bible, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, that does not mean that the book of Hebrews does not have things for the Christians in it. Please do not understand. That does not mean that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not for the Christians. There's it does it doesn't mean that, okay? Uh, it does not mean that you should never read the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. It has nothing to do with you. Please do not do not misrepresent me and do not go out there and say some sort of just insane thing that I never did say. My number one problem, Brother Johnny, when I read the comments, is people are saying things 
that I believe that I know I do not believe that. Right. Okay. Right. The, here's the deal. There, there, and I want to, I want to make sure just very clear. There are people out there who are saying that I believe things about the King James Bible that I have never said. Right. Mm. <laughs> yep. Exactly. They, I mean, there are mm-hmm. people. There are. There are. There are morons with other YouTube channels that are saying, watch out for Spencer Smith because he believes this. And I'm sitting there thinking, what Spencer Smith is he talking about? Right. <laughs> I've never that I've never said that. No. What 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 <laughs> videos are you watching? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I have and I guess getting to the hundred and forty thousand subscriber mark like we are, I guess that's gonna become an, a common thing. So I guess we yeah. just I I guess <laughs> I just need to get used to that now. But people are saying things about me that I have never said. I mean, like what Spencer Smith have you been watching? I don't get you, but whatever, I'm just going to whatever moron. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to have to play with my, uh, this thing's going to have to soothe my emotions. Um, this this thing really helps when I get it, when I get upset, this thing really is, is you. Thank you. Unicorn. Um, but that being said, I want you to be I want to be very clear. This chart does not take any of the Bible away from you. What this chart does is it shows you that all the Bible is for you. Absolutely. But the what part of the Bible is to you? Well, it is this part right here is to you. Mm. And the problem is is that most of these people start taking things that God said that, well, let's, for example, they start taking things that Jesus said to the disciples in the early part of the book of Matthew, and they apply that to themselves today. <clears throat> they start taking things that God said to Moses in the Old Testament and apply it to themselves today. They start taking things that God said to Joshua about everywhere your footstep shall be yours, okay? Okay. And they apply that to themselves today, and they're literally walking around buildings in in downtown Wheeling, West Virginia, claiming a ten, claiming some building for God, and that is not Bible Christian. That is not New Testament Christianity. Okay, so does that make sense, Brother Johnny? Oh, yeah. Are you paying attention? Are you yes, doing sir. the live chat? No, I think you're doing. Yeah. You're a li- you're a <laughs> well, you crazy. can't you can't claim a, a promise for Israel and say it's yours. <laughs> no, you um, can't. No, you can't. You that, know, you you you. Uh, well, what you found with most people is that people that do that choose what they want to pick out of the Old Testament or pick for Israel, but they don't want to follow it all. <laughs> yes, and and this this is the trouble with That's all the this trouble, stuff. Exactly, you can take all of all that's in Paul and epistles and apply it. Yes, you can't just say oh, I'm going to take this and not this. So all that does apply to you, but you, mm-hmm. you, you do that for Israel, where you know you get, well, we're probably wearing mixed clothing right now. Yes, we are. <laughs> you know, so yes, you know, we are. You we can't are. pick and choose. And apparently, we're, we're a mixed multitude. Too. <laughs> so whatever. So. <clears throat> but this this chart right here, I think, is helpful to, for you to understand that not all the all the Bible is for you, but not all the Bible is to you. Okay, so I want you to help understand that. And if you and and by the way, sal, I can prove salvation by grace through faith. In my opinion, I can prove salvation by grace through faith in the book of Genesis. Okay, I I can do all that. And uh, but and by the way, the let me just tell you that the three books, the three books. There goes that Illuminati stuff again. <laughs> the three books in the Bible that everybody seems to completely mess up on is Matthew, Acts, and Revelation. Matthew, Acts, and Revelation. And it's because it's because people don't understand how to divide the Bible. They don't understand it. And so I want to make sure that chart's available for everybody. So here's what I want to do. I want to talk about health as far as the health aspect of the of the health and wealth gospel from only these books, from only Paul's letters. I want to talk about the health uh, of the health and wealth gospel. And then I want to talk about the second part. I want to talk about wealth according to the letters of Paul. So we're going to talk about health and wealth in only those books, Romans through Philemon. Okay, we're going to stick to those, and we're going to see what the Bible has to say about the health and wealth gospel. Okay, first of all, let's start with the idea of health. Bill Johnson, excuse me, Bill Johnson says that he gives no room for any theology that allows sickness. That is a something he has said. If you don't believe that, type in Bill Johnson, uh, theology of sickness or something like that. He believes that it is always God's will for you to be healthy and for you to be healed. He believes that all the time. 
And I'm, I don't like talking about Benny. I, this is, this is another human. I want to, I want to respect her as a person, but we're speaking about theology here or think we're speaking about what God said in his book. And I want to go just by sticking with only, only these books right here, only those books. I want to go to what God's word says about health. Now I'm going to start here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, and I'm going to go to verse number 7. And here's what the apostle Paul said about health in the New Testament. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there were given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. <clears throat> For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. So whatever this thorn in the flesh is that Paul had, uh, we're going to maybe assume it was some sort of ailment, some sort of sickness. Uh, and, and a lot of historians and Bible commentators seem to agree on that. He had a thorn in the flesh, and he asked the Lord three times to take this away from me. And guess what? God did not heal Paul. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So what does the Bible say in the, in the Pauline epistles? What does the Bible say in only these books about health? Well, it says that Paul asked God to heal him of this thorn of the flesh three times. And God said no. That is a total 180 of the theological views of Bill Johnson, Bethel Church, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn. That is a total 180 of what these guys teach and believe. Okay, let me give you another example. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter number 2. Philippians, chapter number 2. And we're going to talk about another guy named Epaphroditus. Um, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see here. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send Epaphroditus, my brother. Now he's talking to the church of Philippi. He said, I wanted to send somebody to you. And by the way, Paul had good men around him that he could go send. And uh, Brother Johnny, he had, if I could put it this way, he had men that he could send on the mission trip without having to go himself. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, Paul had that. That's 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 what I'm telling you. This is what we need. Um, send Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow so soldier, uh, but your messenger in that he ministered to my wants. So I, I want to send this guy. I, this guy needs to go do ministry. This is a great man. He is a fellow companion. He's a brother in the Lord, and he wanted to go. He longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that you had heard he had been sick. Whoa, wait a minute. We got a guy who's right with God, living for Jesus, who's who's on fire for the Lord and, and in a good church, his theology is sound, and he is sick. Mm -hmm. That doesn't line up with Kenneth Copeland. That doesn't line up with ben, ben, uh, Bill Johnson. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but upon me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So listen, he got sick, and he was right with God. And if, you're, if you get sick, it doesn't mean that you're not right with God. I promise you, if this man was alive today, he probably would scare us with some of the Bible knowledge he had and how, how zealous he was. He was a man of God, but he got sick. So the book of Philippians teaches that a man can get sick and still be right with the Lord and still love God. And he got healed, of course. God had mercy on him, but he still got sick. That's the point. Now, I want to go also to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And the Bible says here in uh, verse number 20 about another guy who got sick. And I want to show you this. Uh, Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Now, wait a minute. I thought, Paul, Paul, wasn't it God's will for everybody to be healed all the time? Wasn't it God's will for everybody to be healed? Well, he was there at Miletum with a guy named Trophimus, and he had to go. He went on a mission trip and said, I got I to gotta go to the next ministry station, and um, I'm going to have to just leave you here. You're sick. 
Well, now, Paul, I thought you had faith. Paul, I thought you could do that. I thought you had all these miracles, Paul. Paul, what, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you doing, Paul? You left this man at my lead him sick. That's not God's will. If only Bill Johnson was there to teach the Apostle Paul how to do ministry and how to heal people, then old uh, <clears throat> old Trophimus would have not gotten sick. What a terrible thing. When, where's Kenneth Copeland when you need him, you know? <laughs> terrible thing. But not only that, Trophimus was sick. If, if Epaphroditus was sick, Paul himself was sick and had his own thorn in the flesh. I want you to know also Timothy, the guy that first and second Timothy was written to that he himself was sick. I want you to see this in first Timothy chapter five, every alcoholic Christian's favorite verse <laughs> drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. I believe every, there's a bunch of carnal Southern Baptists walking down the beer aisle, grabbing a, a 24 pack of Budweiser and quoting this verse out of context in their mind, probably from a false Bible version thinking that this justifies drinking and drunkenness. No, it does not. It says, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. And notice this, Timothy, the great man of God of the New Testament, Timothy, the great pastor, and thine often infirmities. Wow, this isn't, we're, we're building a very ugly case here for the health part of the health and wealth gospel. Now, I want you to understand, we're trying to rightly divide the word of truth. We're sticking in this little section right here, which is where the New Testament church gets its doctrine from. We're sticking right there in these passages. We're not going outside of these. So what does the Bible say about the health part of the health and wealth of gospel in that section? Well, it doesn't say anything about it. As a matter of fact, it teaches that if you're a Christian, you're going to get sick sometime. If you're a Christian, you're going to, you're going to have thorns in the flesh. Your old body's going to break down and wear out. And you're going to get old. You're going to get sick. And you're going to die. And that's God's will for your life. And all this healing and these signs and wonders that God gave in the book of Matthew and, and gave in the early part of the book of Acts and all those miracles, things like, like walking around a building and all the prosperity promises to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, that's not for you today, not according to this chart right here. Matter of fact, uh, we can actually make a good case the opposite is true for you. Oftentimes, when a person trusts Christ as a Savior in this church age, that's the beginning of his troubles, not the end of them. So the health part of the health and wealth of gospel in these books is completely destroyed. Paul was sick. Epaphroditus was sick. Trophimus was sick. Timothy was sick. Everybody's sick. <laughs> <laughs> where's these healers man come yeah. on this is a bad day and anybody watching out there is a charismatic i have a nice little uh you know uh, stress relieving <laughs> tool right here for you you guys can borrow that later so let's talk about the second part of the health and wealth gospel let's talk about the wealth the wealth part of this i want to go to second corinthians chapter number six second corinthians chapter number six and let's talk about it you know if you're right with god you're gonna be rich you're gonna have bentley's you're gonna be like you gonna be like creflo dollar with your own airplane you know and jesse do planets with your own airplane and these men up there with their big nice you know <laughs> billion dollar mansions and all these great crazy things walk i mean driving around in 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 limousines and you, you know it's like kenneth copeland has more cars following him around than the president of the united states my <laughs> goodness gracious yeah these big Tahoes and excursions and everything. What is, are those? Those are Suburbans that they drive around. The pre yeah. yeah, those SUVs. Yeah, those the, are Suburbans, the aren't they? Residents use Cadillacs, Escalades. Yeah, Escalades. Use, yeah. yeah, yeah, buddy. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> think I just don't think Paul was driving around in Escalade. I just don't think he had some sort of entourage with him everywhere he went because the Bible says Second Corinthians chapter number six and verse. Uh, <clears throat> verse number four, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and afflictions. Notice this in necessities, boy, I'm going to tell you something about being in the ministry for all these years. I've been in the ministry. I think, uh, I think I've been in the ministry right at 15 years now, full time. There is a lot of ways you can get poor in the ministry. There's very few ways you can get rich in the ministry. That is for sure. I want to tell you right now, the, the average preacher today is living off. He, he has caviar dreams and a tuna fish budget is what he's got. <laughs> I mean, necessities, necessities. The church does not, church work doesn't pay very well. And that's what drives most people away from it. That's right. A lot of people want to do church work, but they want to get paid, you know, 80000 a year with full dental vision, 401k, and, you know, six weeks vacation a year. And, 
and all, and they wanted a car allowance and all this. I'm gonna tell you right now, the ministry has necessities. It has necessities in it, and uh, so that is what the minister of God can expect. Someone said years ago, said if you're gonna go live for Jesus, I can promise you so many. Th- I can promise you a life of hardship and a life of necessity. What about that? That's what the the Bible says. I want to say also that not only did uh, these ministers have necessities, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, a chapter I preach on all the time on missions giving, uh, the church at Macedonia was, was right with God, but they themselves were poor. They were poor financially. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1, More of our brethren, we, did, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that a great trial of affliction. By the way, what this affliction. Oh, wow, things weren't going that well. They weren't living their best life now. The abundance of their joy. And notice this, this church that was completely right with God, their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality. And it talks about how God enabled them to give beyond their power there. But I want you to notice here in verse number 2, the Bible says that the church of Macedonia was right with God. These were good people who loved the Lord, who were walking with Christ. And the Bible says they lived in deep poverty. I've learned this through the years going to all these third world countries and going on to these mud hut churches out there that these people don't even, they don't even live. Like these people are so far out there in Africa, they don't even know what money is. They don't even use money. They're all sustenance farmers and uh, they live in deep poverty. But I found out in those, in those jungles way out there and all those, those really primitive remote places, Uganda and Kenya, I found out that, God is out there in a way that he's not in these rich churches, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to glorify poverty, but I'm going to tell you, God meets with those people. He sure does. God meets with those people. So we find that the church of Macedonia was was poor. But I want to go, all, go also to chapter number 11, and I want you to see Paul's description of his own ministry. He says, uh, <laughs> talks about how all the things that he went through. And he says, uh, he says, are the ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool, I am more and labor is more abundant and stripes above measure. I mean, he got beat. He got the stripes on his back, stripes above measure and prisons more frequent and deaths off of the Jews. Five times received I 40 stripes, save one. He said, thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. He said, in journeyings often. And then he says here, in perils of robbers, perils among countrymen, perils by the heathen, perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, perils in the sea, and perils among... It didn't seem like every day was a Friday to him. (laughs) Joel Osteen, I'm going to compare 2 Corinthians chapter 11 to Joel Osteen's books, and I don't think they're the same thing. I don't think they add up. Paul said, in weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. I just don't see Paul living in a mansion. No, I mean you know, call me a fool. Maybe I'm maybe I'm way off base here, but uh, call me a fool. I just don't see Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and all. I just don't see this here in this chapter. Matter of fact, I just don't think I don't think Kenneth Copeland's suffered a day in his life other than from Inside Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the greatest enemy of Kenneth Copeland's Inside Edition. Lord, <laughs> you really suffered, baby. So. The prosperity gospel, the health and wealth gospel. When you rightly divide the Bible and you go to the Pauline epistles, do you find the health and wealth gospel there? No, you do not. You do not find promises that God will make you rich in that passage. You don't find any promises that God will keep you healthy in those passages. You just don't. And it, by the way, if there is something about riches or whatever, usually it is talking about a spiritual rich. The mm-hmm. spiritual riches that we have. I believe in the book of Ephesians, he's talking about the riches we have in Christ. Well, that's spiritual stuff is what he's talking about. He's not talking about no mm-hmm. money. That's and good. by the way, if you're interested, if if you if you are into the prosperity gospel, I want to tell you that most of the people that are into that are simply using God as some sort of some sort of cosmic slot machine and using God as some sort of genie in the bottle to try to make you rich and try to get you into all kinds of crazy stuff. Matter of fact, as my mind thinks on this subject, uh, I want to go to uh, the Old Testament, to the book of Jeremiah. Um, Let's see here. Prospered. That's the word that I'm looking for. And um, see if I can pull it up here on the fly just like that, being spontaneous just like this. Um, Let's see here. Let's see. I'm going to type in Queen 
There we go. Queen of Heaven. We're going to go there and talk about her for just a little bit. This mystery stuff is all in the Bible, friend. I'm going to show you right now. Um, it says here in the book of Jeremiah. Where is Jeremiah, John? I need to help you, need you help <laughs> me find that, uh, that right there. So um, where what is going on with this program? There we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to search for the book, the word queen in the book of Jeremiah. And uh, it says right here in, uh, let's see here. Um Let's see. There we go. So Jeremiah spoke to these people, and um, and he speaks to them and talks about, let's see, verse f- number 15, Jeremiah 44. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, and Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying. So he's rebuking them for worshiping the queen of heaven, this false religion. And these people respond to Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. So they basically told Jeremiah, Okay, you spoke unto us the word of the Lord, but we're not going to do it. Wow. These people were very, very forward. It says here, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense on the queen of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes, the city of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. So, But since we have left off to burn incense on the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and famine. So you know what they're saying? They're saying that... When we were doing all this stuff right here with the Queen of Heaven, we were doing well financially. But when we served the Lord, we weren't doing well financially. And I think this mentality today is what is driving people into the arms of the Kenneth Copelands. The Kenneth Copelands saying, hey, we can promise you health. We can promise you wealth. We can promise you all this stuff. And who doesn't want health? And who doesn't want wealth? But I promise you today, the God of the Bible is not promising you health. He's not promising you wealth. These people are peddling lies. These people are worshiping the divine feminine. These people are pushing you into mystery religion. These people are lying to you. And these are false teachers that that are lying to you and telling you that your cancer is there because you're not right with God, you don't have the faith to be healed, and that your kid was born with this disability because you didn't have the faith to be healed, and the reason the reason your back hurts is because you're not right with God, and the reason that your kid is sick and has cancer in the hospital is because you haven't given money to my ministry. This is sick nonsense. These people are going straight to hell. They're going straight to hell with their wicked, hellish doctrine that they have deceived people with. These are false teachers. These people are wicked. They have lied to you. And it's time that you woke up and smelled the coffee and start learning what the Bible actually says. And it does not teach any of this garbage right here at all. No way. So if you rightly divide the word of truth and you go to Paul's letters and see what Paul said to us about the local New Testament church, you will not find what Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, and uh, Bill Johnson teach. You won't find it. But other than that, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it. You said something just a second ago about the faith. Is that Paul never says these people were sick because they didn't have faith either. Nope. Their faith wasn't so weak that oh, you got sick and you didn't have the faith of God to heal you. Nope. That's they ne- yep. never says that in there. Well, and I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something that they're that they're doing right now that is really bad. Okay, uh, Mike. There's some there's some woman on the uh, on Twitter right now, Micah, something like that. Uh, Jory, Micah, or whatever. And, and a lot of people are saying oh, yeah, this, yeah. that, well, okay, Paul said that, but I'm following Jesus. <laughs> yes. I've heard him say that. Oh, yeah. Yep. They, they've said that to me. And I, I went through in a big seminar in Africa years ago, and I went through the qualifications of the New Testament bishop. And there were women in the crowd who thought they were preachers, okay? Mm-hmm. say, And they stood up and in plain English told me after I went through the Word of God says what the Bible clearly says about the qualification of the New Testament bishop according to what you see here in Paul's letters. I went through that right there, and I had women look me in the face and say, that was Paul's opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm following Jesus. <laughs> And with that, with that same, I'm following Jesus. It, okay, then what are what are the qualifications? Anybody can do it. Anybody, Anybody can. Anybody can do it. Anybody can. Yep. That's <laughs> well, I'm following Jesus. It's like saying Jesus was homeless and Jesus was a liberal and uh-huh. Jesus was a socialist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, 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 mm-hmm. he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're just saying. Well, I just have the faith to believe. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the Lord said to that family in the in the book of Matthew. He said, "If you have the faith to believe, like a mustard seed, and I have that faith, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna go preach." <laughs> I'm gonna go move this mountain over here, you know. And yeah, and that's that, exactly that's what they're doing, and that is not rightly dividing the word of truth. This is no. not how this works. I feel like that Geico commercial. All the, that's not how this works. No. That's not how any of this works. This is all the Bible is for you, but not all the Bible is to you. 
School. No. These nuts walking around buildings seven times blowing Trump. What are you? <laughs> are you crazy? What's wrong with you people? I'm going to start saying things that I mean, Brother Johnny. Amen. <laughs> Get into trouble. But guys, the health and wealth gospel is a, is a, excuse me, I'm going to wait to leave a quick cough on you. <laughs> that blew my eardrums out, Levi. Thank you. And uh, every guy we bring in here always has, has allergy problems. Doesn't <laughs> Listen to me, guys. The health and wealth gospel is a perversion of the Bible. It is a, an attempt to not rightly divide the word of truth. It is an attempt to take things from other parts of the Bible and apply it to you when God did not say that to you. I want to read right under that arrow again. Almost all modern heresies result from those that try to apply promises and rules from other parts of the Bible that are not for you and oppose them upon the church today. That's exactly that's how the Jehovah's Witnesses got started. That's how the Mormons got started. That's, that's what's wrong with the Campbellites, and that's what's wrong with modern charismatic nonsense. Matter of fact, I would say that that's why the Crusades happened with all them Catholics. Mm -hmm. yep. Them Catholics thought, we're going to usher in the kingdom. Matter of fact, the Lord's going to... The, they looked at the book of Revelation and said, the Lord leads an army to go conquer in Jerusalem. <laughs> Not a bad idea. You know what they did? They got on horses and they said, we're going to go lead the Lord's army and go conquer Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And, the, and that's what that's what the Crusades were. Okay? It's because people don't know how to rightly divide mm. the word of truth. And by the way, when they found Jews along the way, they killed Jews. Mm. That's what they did. That's an ugly... The Crusades was the most anti-Semitic thing you've ever heard in your life. Because people would pull up on a, on a community of Jewish people living in Eastern Bloc Europe, and they say, wait... They'd look at their Bible and say, the Jews, they killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Kill those people, those traitors to the Lord. That's what they did. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. It's because people don't know how to rightly divide the Bible. That's for exactly what the problem is today. So, and here's the deal: the thing that scares me about these people is they know just enough Bible to be convincing. Right. Yeah, you know, I get I get these comments all the time, brother Johnny, from these women, and it's always a woman, you know. <laughs> Brother Spencer, the Bible says a pride goeth for pride goeth before destruction, Holy Spirit for fall. How dare you say that about Lauren Daigle? Mm -hmm. that, well, okay, congratulations on quoting that verse. <laughs> yeah. You know, God bless you, but that's that doesn't apply in what I'm talking about yeah. here. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. glad for you. You know, you're you're a, you're a second grade. You know, level you Bible can, student. Yeah, you can read. Good job. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you can read that. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad for you. I might even say you're a third grade level. Okay, good. But that doesn't have any any application to what I just said. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this this is the problem with people. They use they use Bible lingo as a as a tool of manipulation, but that is not what the Word of God says. And guys, we made a post the other day, and I tried to tell you guys, I, I, my goal, and, and this is why I try to get this on the screen. Do you see that? That's called the Bible. I tried to put that on the screen <laughs> for you so that you can, I mean, look, I don't want you to believe anything that I say. I want you to believe what that on the screen says. I mm -hmm. want you to know that. And look, if 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 you have a question, hey. Let's, let's both go to that book on the screen and let's see what that book says. Let God be true and let Spencer Smith be a liar. Go to the book and just, I mean, it's not about me. It's about the book. Mm -hmm. I want you to know the book and read the book and live the book and let the book be the final authority in all matters of faith and practice, not Spencer Smith's opinion. And mm -hmm. I think the problem today is we've got too many people trying to find out who's right instead of what's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, we good. have all this, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, and Spencer's a heretic because he believes exactly the same things that uh, John MacArthur believes about the end times. <laughs> yeah. But John MacArthur's a hero, Spencer Smith's yeah. to be watched out, but, but they believe the exact same thing. Yeah, caution. What kind of moron are you? <laughs> you are a moron. <laughs> Lord, it's no wonder you don't have your face on camera, you moron. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like he's, his beliefs are so spot on, you have to be cautious. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Better watch out. <laughs> Any, yeah. <laughs> people just, people yeah. are dumb, man. Mm -hmm. But take a picture that's that, uh, take a screenshot of that. Take a picture on your phone if you're watching on your TV and whatever. We want to try to get that to you. 
So guys, listen, this is a big deal. This matters greatly. This matters greatly. And so we want to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be giving an update on people that have given, and we're going to try to do a couple of other things. We're going to talk about that tweet that went around the world. That thing is awesome. It's going to be wild. So God bless you guys. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Share this live stream with people. Got 496 likes. They were right at 500 likes. We need, a, we need about 800 likes on this thing right now. So go ahead and hit that like button, if you will. Smash that like button. I don't like saying that. I like, I like saying smite that like button. That's what I like to say. Anyway, so anyway, we'll be right back, guys. Don't go away. Hey guys, Spencer here. I've got a great, exciting new book for you guys that you're going to absolutely love. Introducing the Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal. This is a great tool that we put together for you guys that you can help deepen your understanding of the Word of God. In this book, we put several very helpful quotes about studying the Bible. We've even put a few charts in there about a bird's eye view of the Bible. Then we've even listed Bible verses by topic. Several of these topics include what does the Bible say about the Bible? What does the Bible say about Jesus Christ? What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit, the church, witnessing, and even prayer, salvation, and other issues like that? Uh, man, this is going to be a great help to you. You're going to love this tool. We even put a section in this book on how to study the Bible, a little guide we put together for you guys, just to give you some pointers and some tips in your own personal Bible study. And the rest of the book is line pages for your own personal journaling. You can put in there the things that God has spoken to you about, some of the things that you've seen from the Word of God, and you have the tool now to document all that yourself. And I'm sure this thing will be a great blessing to you. It is available now on Amazon. There's a link in the description of this video. And I, folks, I know, I know that you will love this. So get one for yourself, for your family, for a friend, and it'll be a great blessing to you. Remember, Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal, now available on Amazon, and we know that you will absolutely love it. God bless you, friend, and remember, Doctrine Matters. And don't you forget it either. <laughs> God bless you, friend. Had to relieve my stress a little bit during that break. Sorry, this thing is really helping me. And uh, it's really pretty. It's got beautiful colors, Johnny. Yeah. It really does. And if you do this, it makes that noise. See that? Hear that? <laughs> you going to put a video out with just you popping those? <laughs> ASMR. <Jay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. ASMR. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, I can't get it. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm just going to be stressed out for this segment then. <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to talk about um, wicked women for a little bit. <laughs> You know, John R. Rice was the old evangelist years ago, and John R. Rice says, as go the women, so go the nation. I think that's true. I think that's true. It sounds about right. We have a problem today in that women, a lot of women are seeking attention, and they're doing it by dressing provocatively on social media platforms. And, you know, I, I think as a Christian woman— and I'm, I, well, I'm not, I'm not a Christian woman. Let me rephrase that. Uh, I think a, a, not as a Christian, a Christian woman. woman, not as a Christian woman. That, that, that's, that, that went south real quick. I think a Christian woman should value holiness because Amen. God is holy. I think a Christian man should val value holiness. Uh, when I got saved, God changed my heart. God gave me a holy hatred for just, it's like the old the old song says, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. And I remember I'd, I'd go hang around people and they'd say the same old dirty jokes and the same old nonsense. And it just, it just didn't, it didn't seem to hit right the, anymore with me. It bothered me, it troubled me. And, um, I said, you know, I don't know, just God changed my heart. I didn't like the same kind of music. Didn't like the same kind of movies. Didn't like, didn't like being around the same kind of people really. And, uh, and I think when God does a work in a person's life, I think that uh, there should be some some something should change in their mind, but this this guy right here, Brian Suave, I, I love that name. Um, 
posted this on Twitter, and this thing, like Glenn Beck was doing an article on this, That's, and New York yeah. Post was doing an article on this tweet. <laughs> like this, it must have been a slow week in the news, I guess. It had I don't to be, know. yeah. Uh, but here's what he posted. He said, "There is no reason whatsoever for you to, dear ladies, there's no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low cut shirts, bikinis, bra, and underwear, or anything similar ever. Not to show your weight loss journey, not to show your newborn baby." not to document your birth story, your brothers. Um, there's a couple things. Hindsight's twenty twenty. I think if he'd have clarified this and made this more towards Christian women instead of just women in general, I think he probably had a different reaction. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this set off a firestorm, Brother Johnny, on Twitter. I'm talking about like like even Adidas. Really? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Like, like, well, like it, it was, it, it was, like, it was vicious, the, yeah. the things they were posting. And, uh, it was so bad. And it even started, there was a hashtag, Dear Brian was trending on Twitter, really? which is a big deal. Oh, which yeah. Is a big deal. It's like, yeah, it must it's have been like, slow. it's like, <laughs> Joe Biden, Elon Musk, dear Brian. Okay, like Ukraine, Russia is number four. Okay, he's number three. It was really wild. But then Beth Moore says this, and Beth Moore is an idiot. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm going to tell you what Beth Moore's problem is. Beth Moore is a woman that got launched into ministry, and her husband is a carnal, weak man mm. who does not love the Lord, not even really that faithful in church. Um, and she got put out on a limb and... As she did, she just did not have her home's not in order is what I'm trying to say. And uh, so as you watch the divine feminine about the order of God's home, this woman, her home's out of order. And she went off and did ministry without a husband that was, you know, right with God. And you see how this has turned out. But she said this, dude, there's no world in which we ever want to see the word bra from you again. Mind your own unders. <laughs> <laughs> Are you 13? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. what a toddler, man. I see the humor in it, but it's like, come on, Beth Moore. You're like almost 60 now. Come on. Um, but but she actually deleted that, if you believe it or not. I had to go to the Wayback Machine to find yeah, this. Yeah, wow. So, of course um, she would. You know. And by yeah. the way, it's a good lesson for everybody to realize that the Internet does not forget. Mm. Right. Um, <laughs> it, anything you do, everything you say, anything you post, anything you search, there is a record somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so the internet never forgets. And, um, but here's the deal. Okay. Most of the women that are on Instagram and stuff like that, that post all this stuff. As a matter of fact, let me go, let me go to that tweet that I, I, sh I tried to share, um, where she deleted it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um yeah there it is right there i said this woman is a complete jezebel and that's beth moore's tweet she deleted that bad boy and uh so you, you see it's gone yeah. okay and then jasmine's like you know hey what was it you know hey you know but um but here's what i posted and this is there's so many things we could so many angles we could take with this but i said i'm for this tweet let the fires of hell burn he's not wrong <laughs> yeah mm. you know and uh yeah. so there's where do we start here brother johnny <laughs> how mad do we want to make people i, I well here, yeah it's a good thing I, I, let me do this let's just start let's just go to the bible i'm gonna put the bible on the screen okay um let's just type in the word modest in the it's not in the book of jeremiah um but this is a direct verse talk about what women should wear and it says here, in like man manner also. So what, what does that mean, in like manner? Okay, how it goes up here and talk about how all men be saved, come to the knowledge of truth, one God, one meter between God and man, gave himself a ransom for all. Um, I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, what is what is modest apparel? Well, the, the text actually explains it, okay? With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Um, now, listen, back then, women would just dress like the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> I mean, like gold in their hair and just all those kind of stuff, okay? 
Well, you just think of like Egyptian, like Egyptian movies. Yeah, that's that's what this is talking about. Just yeah, just real ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. Ridiculous. You know, yeah. like I, I had read that the the Queen of England, like in the Victorian era, she wore clothes that she literally could not even stand up in. Yeah, wow. Okay, just just a big <laughs> like it was like a case of fabric around her that was so <laughs> intricate and so elaborate. Okay, now when it when it says here modest, it's not talking about like necessarily covering things up. That's not that's not necessarily what this verse means. What this means is a woman should not dress in such a way that she draws attention to her mm. body. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that's and that, that's what it's saying. It's shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Meaning this, a woman should not dress like she's walking down the red carpet to premiere her Hollywood movie. Mm. Okay, that's not how a woman should dress. Uh, I will say in a modern context, a woman should not dress, a Christian woman should not dress like her last name is Kardashian. There you go. That's okay. Good. Is that That's a good. fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, good, yeah. understanding the modern culture and then understanding what this verse is actually saying, broidered hair, whatever that is. I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what broidered hair means. Maybe you can look that up for me. Uh, gold or pearls or costly array. Now, there's an extreme here, and I want I want to I want to guard against this extreme. There is an extreme here that says a woman has to look Amish, and that is not true. Okay, I think a woman can wear gold and pearls. Okay, you say, well, a woman can't wear gold and pearls, or whatever. Well, then according to that, she can't wear clothes either. It says costly array. Okay. I think that a woman should not dress like she's walking down the aisle, the red carpet, premiering her Hollywood movie, not something ex- extremely extravagant. And I think a woman ought not dress like a Kardashian. What does that broidered hair mean? Brother That's Johnny? I'm still looking at Okay, sorry. let me know when you find that out. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works? Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man, but be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay, so um, there's a lot here, brother. This, there's a lot here. Um, let's see, somebody just texted me. Brooded means braided. Braided. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just like. A woman ought not to dress in such a way. I, I think. I, th- I think. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying not to go to any extreme on this because I know people that do. Like there are literally people out there who believe that if a woman wears blue jeans, she's not saved. Okay. I disown and disavow all associations with those guys because I am not one of them. All right. But the Bible clearly teaches that a woman should not dress in such a way that she draws incredible attention to her body, and what it's using here is like a rich, extravagant, hey, look at me type attitude. That should be, that's what modest means, okay? Now, here's a deal. Uh, let's, we typed in the word modest. Let's type in the word chaste, okay? Um, <clears throat> the word chaste means that you're not lewd, okay? And we talked here about how aged women likewise need to teach these young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet and chaste. Now listen, if, if if you're wearing something that is just way low and something that's way high and and y- like you're leaving no room for the imagination and what you're dressing and what you're wearing, that's not chaste. That's that's lewd is what that is. And uh, listen, the problem is is that we have a whole generation of women that <sighs> They, let, me, let me put it this way. There's so many different ways you could say this, and, it's, and wrong, so many different wrong ways you could you could say this, okay? Women today are just loving the attention they get by dressing like whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 you're going to attract the wrong crowd. You're going to attract the wrong crowd. I remember when I was a teenager, there was a group of us that were going to meet at the mall, and there was, just, there was like four of us guys, and they were like, like I don't know, a friend of mine had a boy, had a girlfriend, and she brought her friend. Okay, so it was like I didn't even know this person, but the friend of the girlfriend showed up, and she was dressed like she was a streetwalker. I mean, she was dressed very immodestly, and we walked in the mall. And as as they were walking in the mall, a, a group of guys was walking out of the mall, and they catcalled to her, just like "Hey, baby, woo!" You know all that kind of you know, stuff, what, what heathen men do. And she was so mad that they did that. And I'm talking about like, she was, she was dressed like Julia Roberts had a pretty woman. Okay. (laughs) Like, like it was, I was like, 
oh my good what are you what are you not wearing like she was oh, yeah. like there was more uncovered than there was covered <laughs> yeah. okay oh, yeah. and uh i mean like julia roberts from pretty woman be like whoa yeah. okay <laughs> And this group of guys, Kat called her, and she was so mad she was in tears. Mm -hmm. How dare they do that to me? They're objectifying me. <laughs> they're they're objectifying me. I'm I'm more than just that. Well, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, it, it's to some degree, and I, I I hate it, but like it's almost it's almost as if she invited that. And yeah. and this is a sick world we live in. And I I don't I'm I wasn't being critical of her because I really felt bad for her. I thought, Lord have mercy. But a Christian woman, the Bible says a Christian woman should be discreet and chaste. And the only way, the only type of person that would even desire that is a person who has been born again by the Spirit of God and God, uh, the Spirit of Christ lives in them. That's the only way that a person can even uh, uh, desire that. And I think when a person gets saved, something should change. You should, not, you should not be seeking that kind of lewd attention all the time. You shouldn't be seeking that kind of stuff. Matter of fact, we talked about that in that video of, about this whole, um, let's see here, the, the video we did where we talked about this tweet. It talked about the attire of a harlot in the, in the book of Proverbs. I mean, there it is, Proverbs 7, verse 10. Behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot, subtle of harlot. I mean, that the Bible said there is the attire of a harlot. Mm -hmm. So that means, that must mean that there's, there's a way that an attire that's of a woman that's not a harlot. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess yeah. that's a fair summation to have. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is this is a touchy subject because the Bible teaches that women should be dealing with this. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Michael Pearl's wife wrote a book on this. I think, and then uh, it just and I'm not you know I'm not uh, promoting Michael Pearl, but here's the thing: the Bible says. That uh, that the aged women need to be dealing with need to be dealing with this and need to be teaching this to the younger generation. How's that comment section going? Uh, it's not it's not terrible, but uh, yeah. it's not good either. Then, the person's like Jezebel, you know, Jezebel's harlot adorned her hair, panned her face, that sort of thing. Yeah. So well, and and okay, someone asked me a while back says, is it a sin for a woman to wear makeup? Um, I think it's a sin for some women to not wear makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. You know, yeah. but but what what was the point of Jezebel? What when it, she said she she painted her face? What else did Jezebel? I do? don't know. Um, this was a comment, so I didn't say anything. Yeah. else on there. So. Well, Jezebel Jezebel dressed in such a way that she dre she drew attention to her body. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and and the deal is you can you can be stylish and not be homely. Mm. Some pe people swing to all kinds of extremes on this stuff. Yeah. Like you, you either got to look like you're Amish or you got to look like you're a Kardashian. I don't think you have to look like either. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, my wife doesn't dress like that. And I mean, I go to church with a bunch of women. They don't, they don't dress like either. So, you know, don't, don't think that we're promoting, you know, that you're sitting there and you're, and you, you, you <laughs> tore the drapes off the, off the window and you made a dress out of those and you just turned butter in your garage for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's not yeah. where we're not talking about, you know, uh, Al, Al Yankovic is Amish paradise here <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and uh, that was a that was johnny's favorite song <laughs> and uh so but but here's the deal the world the way the world reacted to this tweet shows mm -hmm. a shows a severe problem and you know i don't know i'm not <clears throat> i like i like what he said I, and i even said let the fires of hell burn he's not wrong <laughs> he's not wrong no no I, you know i was talking to a guy today and he said i cannot hit that search button on instagram he said, I can't hit it because everything on there is degenerate trash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, yep. you know, listen, I, I'm going to tell you right now, there are some dark hearted, lewd, nasty women mm -hmm. out there and they use their body to manipulate people. And, mm -hmm. and it's scary business. I'm telling yeah. you, you gotta, you gotta watch yourself, guard your eyes. Matter of sure. fact, even Job said this, let me, let me show you. Uh, he said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. And uh, let's see here. There's the word maiden in the book of Job. Let me pull this up for everybody. It's a good verse for everybody here. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Uh, covenant. That's going to be a tough one for the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of Job. Let me pull that up here. I, I want to make sure I get this ready because it's going to be good. Okay. Um, covenant in the book of Job. Uh, I made a covenant with mine eyes, Job 31 and 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? There it is right there. Talk about your mind and thinking and seeing and all that kind of stuff. Think upon a maid. Covenant with mine eyes. There's a matter of fact, there's a there's like an anti pornography software that's uh, it's called Covenant Eyes. I've never you know, I've I don't know anything about it, but I've heard of that, you know, mm -hmm. called Covenant Eyes. Make a covenant with your eyes that you don't see any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't want to look at it. I mean and and a lot of 
a lot of women that attack this stuff say, well, a man, a man ought not look. Sure. I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. A man ought not look, man ought not look, but there's wicked men out there that are want to look mm -hmm. there. Right. There are wicked men out there that, that if you, even if you do dress right, they still, they're still oh, going to yeah. be that way. <laughs> I, I'm telling yeah. you, ladies, I, I sympathize with y'all. Cause this is a, this is a wicked world, but I promise, I promise you if, if women knew how, how many vile, nasty, disgusting men were out there, y'all probably wouldn't even leave the house. Mm. I promise you that it is a nasty old world out there mm -hmm. and uh, we got to do everything we can to guard ourselves and, and uh, try to do the best we can to honor the Lord in this matter. And it is a tough, tough thing to deal with. I know that for sure. So how's everybody on the comment section, brother Johnny? Doing all right. We're yeah. doing better now. Well, and uh, to tag along with what you're saying is that um, in, in this, you know, people on here are talking about, well, what about the men? What about the men? We'll get yeah. to it. But the, what, what this brings out in people is how much they look to the world for their standards yeah. versus what does the Bible say? What, you know, how, how much better can I be than the world? Yeah. You know, cause like, Oh, the word modest. Well, what's that really even mean? You know, it's yeah. like, well, it's this, it's an inch above the knee or an inch below the knee or whatever. You get into these <laughs> silly games like that. This, you know, whatever. Um, but it, this reveals a lot of people's hearts. Uh, you, if you haven't watched the video, go watch it. But that's what it talks about. You talk about it in there. It's a hard issue. Sure, it and is. I've, and I've I've seen stuff like that before. Well, and someone said, well, "What about the men?" Okay. Well, mm -hmm. let the, what about the men? Let's look at that. Okay. Um, uh, let's. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the word adultery. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Who said that? Matthew five twenty eight. Okay. You've heard it was said of them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery in his heart and, uh, with her and already in his heart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, men have the responsibility not to look, not to look at women. Yep. And, uh, so we're, we're saying, I mean, I, you know, listen, I'm, the problem is when you talk about this, women are, as a lot of women feel like, well, I'm just I'm just a slave to the you know what women, what men look at me and there's nothing I can do to to help this and yeah men have a responsibility too men should not be looking at women I mean yeah. Lord have mercy absolutely uh, it's twofold. It's twofold it is it I think I think yeah. both parties have a responsibility here and uh, you know men sh men ought not be. Men ought not be looking, and men ought not be pervs. But at the same time, women ought not be, you know, displaying everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I think I think the twofold nature of it is is the women side of it has got so bad it's 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 affected the men more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it it both sides have have really escalated in everything they've done. Sure. Sure. You know? Well, you know, I mean, uh, Alan Parr put out that video uh, a while. It's it probably about three months ago where he said, "I'm, I'm not going to go on Instagram anymore." Mm -hmm. And he, and he, he, I said, well, let's see what Alan has said. And Alan said, I don't want to go on Instagram anymore because all there is is a bunch of women with no clothes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Alan said that. Yeah, and I thought, well, you, you're not wrong. <laughs> not wrong, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, and I commended him. I said, hey, man, yeah. you know. Uh, but uh, it, I'm telling you, like, it, it's ridiculous. You look, you, these, see, I'm, I'm getting to where I'm like, I, I'm like 40, almost 4,300 followers on Instagram now. Mm -hmm. And it'll say so-and-so follow you and you'll hit just to see who it is. And it's some woman. And this post is a, is some graphic. I love Jesus. The next post, she's in a bikini. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. thinking, Lord have mercy lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 it's like, Oh my God. I'm just going to, I'm just going to post my funny meme and then get off this, this <laughs> trash heap. Yeah. This, so this thing's a dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> but uh, the problem is, is when you bring awareness to this and you point to what the Bible says, a lot of women feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and because, because they, they didn't mean anything by it. They, they, they legit weren't thinking that way. And, uh, they don't understand what the Bible says on this and, and don't be embarrassed. I mean, you know, listen, uh, just, just, you know, now, so just fix it, you know, and it's okay. Yeah. We, we listen, it, I, there are no pictures of me, my, my first year <laughs> of being saved. And I thank God for that. Okay, <laughs> I thank God that there's no Instagram account that I had back in those days. I thank God Facebook and and Twitter and and their smartphones. I thank God that there's none of that stuff. I, I think I had a, a Polaroid camera when I was in high school. Yeah. Thank God all that stuff's gone. Hallelujah, glory to God because I don't want none of that stuff haunting me. Mm. But that's that's the uh, that's what we had going on here now today. Mm. And uh, faithful Christian says TikTok is the worst. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I agree 100. percent So uh, let's see. You got let's let's see. Uh, yeah, there she is. Let's see. Whoa, what is going on here? She said TikTok is the worst. 
you know, I started a TikTok account. I, I can't even function on that platform, no. man. No. That thing is filled with just complete morons. Yeah. I got on there for about and, five minutes. Like, this is this is stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's like a vine. Yeah. Well, see, vine. Michelle, <laughs> look, look, Michelle just posted. I was thinking this. So sick of watching posts of hacked naked women and pregnant, ugly, ugly, uh, pregnant belly posts and heavy couples dancing. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like I mean, we did the pregnancy thing. You know, my wife takes her pictures, but she's fully clothed. And like, hey, you know, whatever. But she you know, shouldn't have to take, you know, lewd pictures. To put yeah. It on there. Well, well I, and I, I think I think there's a measure of that where they're just seeking validation, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and and some of the, some of these women, I'm like, they I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in trouble here, brother Johnny. I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble <laughs> for saying this. But I can. There are there are women out there that they their husband does not give them any attention. Their mm-hmm. husband doesn't tell them they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, that's what that's what's wrong with a lot of young ladies today. They don't have a daddy who's like, "Hey, I love you. You're beautiful," sure. and all that that validation, and and that, that they need that healthy validation, and so they go seeking that, mm-hmm. and they seek it on, the, and they'll post a picture of, <laughs> yeah, you know, and they they post something like this, and, <laughs> and, and and then you read the comments, it's like, "You're so beautiful. Oh, you're so pretty. Mm-hmm. You're yep. so, you know," and it's like they post like. You know, feeling cute. Might delete this later. You know, <laughs> they yeah. they post that yeah. stuff, and 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 the reason they're doing it is because they they want validation, affirmation. They want yes. attention. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, sir. And uh, well, I think in so, social media is really threw that off the chart. You know. Oh man. I think it's yeah. I, it's kind of always been there, but you know, ten years ago, it was like, yeah, oh, just get over it. But now it's really like. Yeah, I have to have this validation. I have to have mm-hmm. people tell me this because if not, then the world says I'm not, I'm not pretty. I'm not whatever. Yep. Same, it goes the same thing with the guys. The well, guys are getting just as bad. Well, guys, well, guys in their workout videos is that's yeah. the and I used to do yeah. that. Do oh, the workout videos. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah, working up these biceps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, it, this applies to guys too. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes like, very much. You know, when when you're sitting there and you know doing all that nonsense and uh, you're posting. You know, like, uh, hey, just killed it today on the treadmill, and like, like you, you pull up your shirt. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, hey, just killed it on the treadmill. Just, I just did some calf raises, and you're pulling up your shirt, showing, showing your six pack. Okay, you're you're just as nasty as as the other ones. Okay, yeah. you know, hey, you know, hey, got, yeah. it, got it done today on my back. You know, I mean, just like. <laughs> Put your phone down, you dweeb. What's wrong with you? You're 140 pounds. And the reason you look like that is because you're malnourished. You're not fit. <laughs> Levi got quiet. <laughs> yeah. You just noticed that? He got real That's quiet. Not me. <laughs> Levi got real quiet when I said that stuff. You know, I mean, come on, guys. Listen, can, can, can Christians just put clothes on everybody? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on! I'm gonna put this hat on because I just we we everybody needs to cover up everything. <laughs> That's what we got to do. And uh, it, I just I, I don't know. And really, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I, I think we we do a disservice as as preachers, and I, I throw myself in there when we when we only point this principle at women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I I've been guilty of that because you know. Women ought to put some clothes on. Well, men ought to put some clothes on too. Amen. Mm-hmm. You bunch of dweebs walking around mowing your grass with no shirt on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, put put a shirt yeah. on you. You 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 look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> I mean, lo, your your love handles driving around the front yard on your on your new Cub Cadet mower. You don't that guys have some modesty too. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Johnny got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do the mowing, so I'm all right there. <laughs> the thing that cracks me is when you have like the older guys who have like pot bellies yes. and they're out on the machine. <laughs> hey. hey! And then they want to talk to me yeah. when I check my mailbox. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be seen near you. You. I mean, oh, I, I need sunglasses on just to look at you. Oh. I mean, you, your melatonin level zero. You know. I mean, what is wrong with these people? Hey, don't forget about uh, Proverbs six twenty five. What does that say? Lest not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Men have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's written mm-hmm. to men. Well, that's what you know. The I was when I was watching your video, I was thinking about this. The you know people say you object by women. You you so you <laughs> sub you know you uh, I don't with a subjugate. I don't know women to certain things. And it's like well, men have a whole different nature that they have. That the Bible talks about them, that they mm-hmm. have to do it. It's not just the Bible is not mm-hmm. just against women. <laughs> well, you know? there, there's there's a 
billions upon billion of dollar makeup industry for women Mm -hmm. and men are not buying makeup is because women are not attracted to what they see. Mm. You ever, you ever seen, I've seen like, I remember, I remember years ago, there was a picture of Cindy Crawford, the supermodel with her husband. (laughs) I thought it was like her, her like disabled. I thought it was her (laughs) disabled brother or something. Like he looked like she married that. (laughs) Like that's her husband. He looked like a, he looked like he had a room temperature IQ. Like, (laughs) you know, he was, he was was not a good looking fella, (laughs) but, but I thought to myself, you know, I, I guess that's what women go for. They like, they like guys that make them feel good and you know, that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and, but, but men want a pretty woman. That's what mm-hmm. that's what dudes go for, and whatever. And uh, I don't know. We're getting in a lot of trouble here, brother Johnny. Yeah. Right, how, how many people are watching? Seven ninety eight. Got six hundred twelve thumbs up. Five. Oh, I only got five thumbs down tonight. So I think yeah. I think we're being fair here tonight, though. Yeah. I think we're being fair, yes, sir. Yeah. I, we're not, this is not a he man woman bashing no. service, you know. <laughs> no. He man woman hater. You know. <laughs> uh, but listen. Um, <clears throat> sorry, as Fiona just said. She married that. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought, I thought that ain't no Kennedy, you know. Yeah. I mean, he ugly. What's the deal, Cindy? I mean, what was Kathy Ireland's the the supermodel that can't see? She's blind. Yeah, you know. I thought yeah. I thought you don't got you and Kathy Ireland to get your eyes checked. <laughs> that's what I thought. So anyway, that's my. I, we're in trouble, brother Johnny. Yes. We're in much we're trouble. In, Lord have mercy. I mean. <laughs> This is the worst live stream we've ever done. All right, dudes, dudes, listen to me, especially you 25-year-old pseudo buff dudes that think you're tough. <laughs> put a shirt on. Mm-hmm, and you girls that are walking around with whatever, put a shirt on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We sell them in our spread shirts. <laughs> 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 you can wear one says Dr. Matters and be modest and be a blessing to a lot of people. <laughs> This, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> that's your, her next, yeah, that's her next shirt. Way. Put a shirt on and then have a Bible <laughs> verse for it. Yeah. Make sure clothes matter. <laughs> clothes matter. Put clothes on. I'm wearing three shirts, so I don't even know why I did that today. Just an accident. I'm so stressed out, Brother Johnny. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing three shirts today and this thing. Just I would I, I need my, my purple Zevia drink. Hang on. Mm. <laughs> put a shirt on people woman put a shirt on christian woman christian dude quit trying to show your twigs arms looking weird you, you don't even have no debt you ain't vin put diesel you ain't you ain't arnold schwarzenegger you christian dude who did you know some biceps can't even curl a 25 pounder you ain't you ain't no dwayne johnson put a shirt on see i can at least curl 25 <laughs> There's a 25 in the corner over there if you want to get it. So do it. <laughs> put a shirt on, everybody. Put a shirt on. Be modest. Be modest. Everybody be modest. Would, would everybody stop walking around like the maniac of Gadara? Sitting Ooh. there naked and screaming and hollering and <laughs> screeching like some sort of banshee. What's wrong with everybody? Matter of fact, let me show you this. Somebody, let's, let's do this. I got this in my mind right now. Um, the maniac of Gadara. You find here in the New Testament that when he Mm. met Jesus, if I can type correctly, when he met Jesus, they found him and he was clothed. Let's see here. Let's see. When Jesus healed the maniac of Gadara, they said they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. He had legions that and had the legion sitting and clothed. Mm. Hallelujah. He had clothes on. <laughs> he was probably wearing a Doctrine Matters hoodie. He, th- that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. And uh, what in the world? Someone said, uh, talk about birds going on newspapers. Yeah, what? I, I do. I make a mistake <laughs> by talking about Bible stuff. And then I look in the comment section of <laughs> that with no context. And I just completely I'm like, what is wrong with this comment section? <laughs> yeah, don't look at what, it. These people, these are Christian people saying, what is, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Anyway, God. Hey, modesty God. matters on the shirt is what people are saying. Yeah. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, modesty matters. Modesty matters. It does matter. Because look, look, stop showing yourself to the world. Stop it. Put some clothes. Is it is it too much to ask that people just put clothes on? <laughs> just put clothes on. 
I mean, you. This ain't Miami. It's February. <laughs> yeah. Put some clothes on. It's February, Kentucky. Right? It's February, y'all. It ain't time for none of that. Now, listen. I'll, I'll be a little bit more gracious in August when it's boiling hot. But it's February. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> it's February. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. Y'all got anything you want to add to this conversation? No. I'm. Uh, I'm just. I'm putting the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I'm scared. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Big shirts matter. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Here, Levi, put this 2X on. 2X uh, hoodie on. So Russell Gibson That's just said, right. put, just put my shirt on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't even. Uh, <laughs> Teresa Hardy says Spencer is going to get put a shirt on hoodie. <laughs> <or something. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, so what's with the crop top and shorts in february <laughs> i mean it's there's snow on the ground they're still walking around yeah. with them spaghetti straps and whatever yes. come on come on what's wrong what's russell gibson says hottest month here where are you at russell he must be in australia must be. we don't do things right anyway so. <laughs> Hey, T- Tina said this, said, no one will pay for the whole movie when you show too many previews. That's- <laughs> mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't believe we just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we just said that. Avery F. said, conviction matters. And, you know, mm. anyways. <laughs> Fiona Yar says, I can't breathe. All valid points. <laughs> I'm, this is embarrassing. This live stream scares me to death. We're probably going to get a community guideline strike after this whole deal. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to go. Um, we just don't want to see you, okay? I understand that. Amen. Well, anyway, let's do this. Let's, uh, guys, I want to remind you again. I don't, I don't know how to segue out of this. This is like I'm trapped in this whole <laughs> s- section here. Anyway, we're doing a, we're doing a con- uh, contest tonight, guys. Everybody who donates in the live chat or in the PayPal, we're putting your name in a drawing. We got, uh, we got you over there, brother Johnny. Show us that yeah. basket of names right yeah. there. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord for on. that. We're gonna do, we're gonna do ten people. Ten people tonight are going to get one of these packs and one lucky well no no i keep saying it (laughs) one providentially favored person in this live stream tonight is going to get this this doctor matters hat you're going to get this santa claus hoodie right there (laughs) you're all naughty and you're going to get that package plus this brand new King James Bible, nice leather thing. Man, this thing's nice. We're going to send it to you just as a thank you. Hey, we and, forgot about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we forgot about these. The, the grand prize winner also is going to get two CDs. Uh, God has been the faithful, the Faithman Quartet. That's a good CD, Brother Calvin and all those guys there. And then also the uh, Sound Doctor, because of grace, the, these guys here, uh, our friend Brother Gary Jackson recommended these to me. So we're going to give these two away tonight with the package, with the Bible, with the hoodie, with the hat, with everything, <laughs> and the Mingwe beef jerky, and all that good stuff right there. So don't miss out on that we're gonna do that here in just a few minutes so god bless you guys we're gonna take just a quick break and when we come back we will uh do the drawing god bless you guys hey guys your friend spencer here a couple years ago the lord laid on my heart to do some research into the contemporary christian music world and i was astounded at at what i found i just found so many unbelievably unbiblical things even some demonic things that were happening and the lord led me to put all that into a book form And this is the book we have written, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. And as far as books that are dealing with the negative and the dangerous aspects of contemporary Christian music, this book right now is the number one seller as of the time of the recording of this video. And so uh, we want to put this out there and let you know about this book. Uh, This book will be shipped to your front door by Amazon. And we've had so many good reports from all over the world, really, of people saying that, man, this book really opened up my eyes to the truth of this entire industry. And we deal with people like Hulk Hogan. Hogan, Britney Spears, Beyonce, uh, Amy Grant, Alice Cooper, Elvis Presley, Larry Norman, R. Kelly, Puff Daddy, and all the record companies really all together. We deal with the, the whole big spectrum. So get your copy today. There's a link in the description below. And I know this book will help you understand the issue better and understand why this is an issue. So God bless you, friend. Hope you enjoyed the book. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and look forward to many good updates with you in the future. God bless you. All right, guys, thank you very much for that. I did do my intro. Hang on, I gotta do my intro.
Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, so my friend Frankie over there in uh, uh, in actually lives in Holland over there. I, I'm not sure if he lives in Amsterdam, but he sent me this. This is a, a meme. I'm going to try to see if that screen will focus on it. I think this is really good pertaining to what we are now talking about. But it says there at the very top, it says, uh, women should dress modestly and not flaunt themselves to men who are not their husbands. And then it says, weak Christians there. Come on, camera. There it says there at the bottom, weak Christians. Look at that and get mad. And uh, thank you for that, Frankie, man. <laughs> I appreciate that so very much. And uh, hallelujah. Uh, Cheney can't spell her last name right. Uh, question for Spencer. Since you wore the hat, if you sweat in it, has, been, has it been blessed with holy water? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to call it the Elvis effect. You know, Elvis you know, used to wipe his sweat off his th- off his forehead and hand the towel to a woman in the crowd, and she'd like pass out. That was I don't know what was going on with that. So, all right. Well, brother Johnny, we need to do some uh, some drawings here. So you got all that ready to go here? So. <clears throat> we good on that? Uh, one more person in here. One more person. There we will we get go. that ready to go, and we'll send that over this way. And uh, let's see here. Put L. James in there. L. James, one yep. more. Got okay, you got, got you got L. James in there. Yep. All right, so we're going to give away 10 of these beautiful little packages right here for uh, 10 of our faithful listeners who donated tonight. Thank you guys very much. And uh, God bless you. Actually, Carrie Lawson just yeah, made well, it. Yeah, I think you? we got her. We you got, got her in there. there. Yeah, from the and then Emily. Well, you got you just got two more. Got two more. Emily Thompson. And uh, let's go ahead and add them to it as well. And uh, you want to do two more for me? Emily Thompson and E equals MC squared. Just just donated. So let's throw those names in there as well. Don't want to miss anybody. <clears throat> Sarah B just said the Spencer Nader. Amen. <laughs> And um, <laughs> so I appreciate that. And then Cheney just said, LOL, Spencer, praise the Lord right, for that. Okay, so we're good. Yeah, Frankie, there he is, Frankie. Salutes from Amsterdam. From Amsterdam. <laughs> he walk, this dude walks around Amsterdam with my Dr. Matter shirt on. Can you believe that? <laughs> this dude's amazing. I love Frankie. He's, a, he's my bro. So thank you very much for that, man, and I uh, appreciate you very much. So uh, we got sound effects ready? We do. We got some sound effects ready to go. Right. I'm going to... Uh, I don't think I, I don't hear those. Don't hear them. I don't hear them. I'm not hearing them. I, I, I hear them in here, but I don't see them on yeah. my screen here. Oh, boy. Anyway, all right. So we're just going to do the sound effects by faith Let's and trust faith. the Lord for that. So uh, <laughs> go ahead and give me a sound effect. Ready, set, go. Um, first winner tonight is Grace of God. Grace of God. Amen. And uh, Grace of God. You guys stay with us. We're going to give you instructions what to do here in just a moment. Okay, need drum roll. Uh, number two winner tonight is <clears throat> Speedy DRZ. Speedy DRZ. The penmanship is subpar tonight. Yeah, that <laughs> um, one was a bad one. Yeah, <laughs> the penmanship is subpar. <laughs> number three winner tonight is Eric Robertson. Eric Robertson. All right. Number four winner tonight is. This button. <laughs> Sully. S U L I. Sully. Okay. Number five winner is Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. You know who you are. <laughs> Sarah. Good job, Sarah. All right. So, <clears throat> number six winner is. Ow. I hit my finger. All right. Number six winner is Michelle Shepard. Michelle, Michelle Shepard. Okay. Number seven winner is. Okay. Picked it with my left hand. <laughs> I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> Jenna Jean. Jenna Jean. Number seven. That was number seven. Okay. Number eight. Number eight winner. Picked it with my right hand. Is. This is number eight. Number eight. Number eight winner is Fiona Yar. Hey, Fiona. Fiona. Fiona, we use her comment tonight. We're Shrek. Comment. All right. So, Fiona. <laughs> Shrek and Fiona. <laughs> so, uh, I lost track of numbers. So, see, that was uh, that was number eight. This is number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Okay. Numero Nueve. Been Dominican Republic right. four times. Nueve. <laughs> nueve El Winero is Emily Thompson. Emily Thompson. All right, so grand prize winner, grand prize, grand winner. prize winner, gets the gets the Bible, gets two CDs, gets a hoodie and a hat, and all the the book, the bows, everything. The hat that I wore, 
Probably has a hair of mine. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, all right. The grand prize winner tonight is going to be. Keep going. The button stops, so keep going. <laughs> there it is. Carrie F. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Wyoming. <There> you <laughs> all right, Carrie, got a brand new Bible and some CDs for you and all that kind of stuff. We need some instructions, Brother Johnny, on uh, where to send. Uh, let's see, I'm going to type this in. What is that uh, That email? So the email you're going to want to send it to. Um, Spencer Smith Contest. Spencer Smith Contest at gmail.com. Okay, that's on the screen. So you guys that are winners, please, please, please email us. Spencer Smith Contest, uh, no S at the end of it, right? No S. No, yeah, just uh, Spencer I, Smith Contest at gmail.com. Spencer Smith Contest at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You guys that have won, please email us. Spencer Smith Contest at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, does Carrie even on here? I don't, I'm not seeing her. Where is she at? Um, yeah, still on there. She's on there. I'm yeah. not. I'm not seeing her. I'm trying to. I'm trying to look through all this. But anyway, uh, yeah. Okay. So praise the Lord for that, guys. We enjoyed everything, and hope you guys enjoy all that good stuff we gave you. That uh, these bows are from uh, from the Dominican yeah. Republic. So that's yeah, she so does impressive. really good on them. Yeah. She does really good. So we appreciate them very much. So guys, go ahead and hit the like button. We got. We had. Uh, I think we hit over 800 people watching here for a little while tonight. Got 663 yeah. likes. Don't forget to smite that like button, and uh, and that'll be really good. Johnny, got any words of wisdom before we go tonight? Stay true to the Word of God. Amen. That's a blessing. Levi, you got anything intelligent and blessing? And filled with wisdom and Holy Ghost and fire, you want to say tonight? I hate everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you. Yes. No, what I did want to say was uh, just when you're listening to somebody, just like we were talking about Jordan Peterson before, like listen to what people say. I have, I have a feeling this is going to be completely out of subject. <laughs> no, it's not. So, no, just listen bring to it what around. everybody bring says. It around. Oh, yeah. So you'll bring it around. Bring it around, Levi. Let's go. <laughs> what you got? No, just listen to what people say, because uh, a lot of people, like Spencer said, they sound very smart, very wise, but it's very easy to take the Bible out of context. It is. It's probably one of the easiest things to do. Amen. So, and uh, yes, let's sir. see here. Um, <laughs> people are laughing at you, Levi. It's funny. So, <laughs> it's not my fault. So, uh, faithful Christian said, Levi, laughy, laughy, laughy. <laughs> so, anyway, so um, Manika says this, said, shake, <laughs> shake them haters off. <laughs> I, I think Manika has been listening to Taylor Swift, <laughs> and uh, that, that's not good. So, anyway, um, Ray Matthews, the legend. The legend Ray Matthews uh, said, "Great live stream tonight." Anyway, yeah, you know Ray Matthews built the hospital he was born in. <laughs> Did you know that? The dudes, dudes, the dudes, it's unbelievable. So, anyway, God bless you all. We're gonna play some music for you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful night, and uh, we will see you guys very soon. Share our videos. Go watch Third Adam. Don't be weird and uh, read the Bible and brush your teeth and ride your Harleys on the right side of the road. <laughs> have a good night, guys. We love y'all. By the way, we're going to do a, a members only after party afterwards. I'm going to start that song over. So, you guys are there. See you guys in the uh, pre trib post party. That's what we're going to do. So, guys, we'll see you there in just a minute. Don't go away. I'm going to play that song again. God bless you guys. Wait, hang on. That's not the right one. Uh, I'm messing this whole live stream up. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you all later. A lowly sheep just grazing in the field that's been provided. I follow close behind the one who's led me all this way. He watches o'er his tender flock with vision undivided, providing everything we need with mercy every day. The shepherd leads his sheep along this winding narrow road. Shady pastures by the rivers flow I'm not driven down this path I trod I 
follow him by choice. I don't need to see the way ahead. I only need to hear the shepherd's voice. He speaks in quiet, peaceful tones with love and compassion guiding every step i take i know i'm in his care though the path is dark and dim i'll follow his direction i will not fear what lies ahead for i know he will be sheep along this winding narrow road through grassy fields and shady pastures by the river's flow i'm not driven down this path i trod i follow him by choice i don't need to see the way ahead i only need shepherd's voice I don't need to see the way ahead I only need to hear the shepherd's